All right, folks, I just got myself a new multimeter. I'm used to using multimeters like this. I believe I bought this for $20 at Canadian Tire a few years ago. The cases aren't very good, so the screws broke free and the battery lid doesn't stay on. The little thing that's supposed to prop it up broke off and the, the buttons just feel kind of crappy. Sometimes it gets stuck. Uh, it doesn't have auto turn off, uh, so the battery goes dead because I forget it on. Um, it doesn't have a beep function for checking continuity. Um, what else? It doesn't have backlighting. It doesn't have a hold function. Yeah, it just overall it feels kind of crappy. So I splurged a little bit and I bought myself a Greenlee DM45. I bought this off Amazon for about $100 shipped. And uh, yeah, so now we're going to have a little look at it. I don't know. I think we're going to do this AVE style and uh, actually get right into it, take it apart, see what's inside of it. And uh, then afterwards, maybe we'll test a few things and check out the functions. So let's just tear into it. Okay, so I've taken you guys off of my chest harness and put you on a tripod. I've also switched cases, so if it sounds different now, it's because of the different case. So what I'm going to do is pull off this condom. And we'll see what it says. Okay, it actually says PVC there on the case, the rubber protective housing condom thing. And it has one molding mark around the outside. So a two piece clamshell type thing on the outside, but on the inside it's actually three separate pieces. You can see there's a line here and the line here as well. Now AVE did a review recently of a fluke multimeter and uh, he found the same same kind of markings on the inside. Okay so here we have the case of the multimeter and I'm gonna say that this probably isn't uh, any kind of a glass fiber reinforced. Uh, by sliding the point of that over it, I don't feel any kind of grit or anything. It slides very smooth. Um, so I'm going to say this is probably an ABS material. Well, that's kind of interesting. We see the battery lid actually holds the stand on the back of the multimeter. So the stand goes on there like that. And the battery lid goes on and holds it in place. This piece is made out of ABS, so I'm probably right about the rest of the case. We see ABS marked on there. If you have this open, in the open position, and you drop something on it, or you happen to drop the meter itself when it's open, there is probably a fairly good chance that it will snap those tabs off. Um, they're not very beefy. I mean, you shouldn't be doing that anyway, but still, uh, it would be nicer if they had, uh, you know, a metal pin or a longer pin, something a little bit more substantial, but still, that's probably a pretty common failure point for all multimeters if they're dropped with this open. One thing I should mention about this is that it does have brass inserts uh, where the battery case goes on, so that's nice. Instead of just having uh, the screws go into the plastic, the screws go into the brass, and so that way you can remove them and reinstall them plenty of times without the hole getting stripped out. Um, the case is held together just by like a 
carpenter screw type thing which is fairly common in electronics and the only reason why you would normally go in here is to replace a fuse if you blew a fuse and yeah most people would never in the life of a multimeter open it up so these screwing into plastic probably isn't a very big deal all right the first look at it here we see it's got two large fuses this one is 10 amps and this one is 400 milliamps I believe why they're so large even though this is only 10 amps and this is only 400 milliamps is because this is a cat 3 tool so the reason why these fuses are so large even though they're not very high amperage is basically to protect the user this is rated for max 10 amps for 10 seconds so if you <laughs> make an error and run 100 amps or 50 amps through this it's going to blow that fuse and uh, to protect the user um, they use these fuses so if we have a look at the leads we have uh, cat to a thousand volts and with the insulator on or the cap on it is category 3 at a thousand volts and cat 5 at 600 volts I've looked this over a little bit more and I have to say there's nothing really cheesy or horrible that stands out all of the solder joints are good they use you know a uh, reasonable amount of solder we can see where the banana connectors plug in there's a, a fair amount of solder around these connections which is nice all of the components themselves are soldered in well there's no uh, overheating marks there's no uh, dirty flux hanging out around so the circuit board is fairly well secured and it's secured with screws it's nice to see a lot of stuff these days um, especially from China you would just have the you know the circuit board fit under an edge of something at the front and then it would just snap into place at the back or something so it's nice to see that they use actual screws to hold it together and here are the buttons here is the dial and here's the case and it's got ABS marked right there all right we've got our connections for the backlight which looks uh, soldered on reasonable they penetrate through the circuit board and are soldered on on this side there's not much else we can do in here this, this is actually held on with uh, a few screws from the back side so there's four screws that hold that on so I can put them back in actually I guess I should ask you guys to leave your opinion on it in the comments when you watch videos like this do you care to see the guy turning screws or do you just want to see it when it's apart so here are the buttons they just go through here and make contact with the surface of the circuit board very common there's the contacts for the dial which just has these copper contacts everything looks to be fastened down quite well you can see there's healthy amounts of solder holding everything down definitely nothing cheesy looking about this we see here the wires from the battery connection pass through the circuit board and then are soldered on the other side and what that does is it stops you from being able to pull directly on the solder joint or on the solder connection so when you pull on the wires it actually pulls on the circuit board instead of pulling on the uh, solder joint it's, I don't know if the camera will pick this up but it actually has a spring-loaded ball bearing for the detent so the clicks that you feel 
are very positive and <clears throat> the mechanism that they use to lock the backing to the button itself uh, hold everything square and true so that's why the button feels as nice as it does very positive very uh, smooth feeling there's nothing wobbling around or real flimsy looking everything's soldered on well um, the components don't have brand names on them that I can see so that may be a concern to some I guess all there is to do now is to put it back together I... there we have it Let's see we'll turn it on and it seems to be working smells kind of weird almost like a chlorine smell a chinesium smell as AVE would put it all right now we're going to test the functionality of it and I've got a few very simple items to test here we'll start off by testing a couple of batteries and then I have a capacitor we have the thermocoupler and I may try to check the frequency or the Hertz as well I'll show you guys me plugging it into the wall so let's check the voltage of this battery it should be 1.5 or higher just a regular AA battery and it's 1.84 we've got a 9 volt battery here and the name kind of gives that away nine volts on the knob I'm, I'm curious what the amperage output will be on a nine volt battery what huh well that's interesting nine volts but only huh look at that I would not have assumed that. I would have assumed that a 9 volt battery put out more amps. Now we will try to check the capacitance of this capacitor. You can see there the rating on it 25.2. So this is obviously a good capacitor. I don't. Alright, so we have the thermocoupler installed. And if we look at the manual, we'll see that uh, the meter can go up to a thousand degrees Celsius or 1832 Fahrenheit, but the supplied thermocoupler is only good up to 204 Celsius or 400 Fahrenheit. So it says thermocoupler supplied with meter is rated minus 50 to 204 Celsius minus 58 Fahrenheit to 400 Fahrenheit. We see it is 20.8 Celsius showing on the meter and here I've got 20. You see it's a beautiful two degrees outside. I think it's actually warmer than two degrees out. There is my outside thermometer. And again, I think this is probably more accurate because it doesn't feel like two degrees. Let's compare it to the thermostat in my garage. 14.5. Give it a second here to warm up. All right, there it seems to have equalized. And it is 13.6, 13.7. And the thermostat in here says 14.5 so one more little test here i'm going to check the frequency of the wall outlet and it should be 60 and we're 59.99 so it is the greenly dm45 digital multimeter it is auto ranging um 
and yeah the button on it here the dial feels quite nice has a range setting so you can select instead of having an auto range it has a hold function it also has backlighting which is quite nice Um, what else? Uh, the leads aren't the best leads ever. Um, they've got the caps on them, the insulators, which you can remove. So you can get your pokey bits in the pokey bit receptacle. And if you want it to beep, you push the beep button. Which is nice to be able to turn off because sometimes it can just get annoying. But sometimes, too, you've got the multimeter sitting somewhere where you can't see it and you want to be able to hear the continuity beep. Uh, it also has a temperature probe. As you can see, this has a nice pull-out stand and it actually stands up. It does have these holders for the leads, which I'm not a huge fan of. I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of them on any multimeter. Yeah, it doesn't have the greatest leads in the world. Um, it doesn't have any kind of a, you know, pullback attachy majig. Um, it just has these insulators, which I seem to have misplaced one of. Oh, there it goes. Um, so yeah, it has backlighting, which is very nice. It has temperature, which is very nice. Hertz, uh, which is very nice has the beep function which you can turn off um, yeah so um, it's definitely going to do everything that I need to do and uh, it feels nice the dial feels nice all of the con connections look secure so that makes me feel a little bit better about knowing that this is going to get dropped when I use it and it's probably going to keep working even after I drop it a couple of times uh, AVE recently did a review of a fluke meter which you can get um, on eBay and it's about the same price I don't think that it has uh, hurt I will put a link to his video in the description and uh, you can compare the two I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you next time